Last thing that I want to work on is <laughs> the three uses. I'm not going to point there. Three uses of the law. This encompasses the law as a whole whether it's moral, civil, or ceremonial, right? When we look through the scriptures and we're uh, reading all of this law, and I got to affirm and remind you guys that there is law in Old Testament and there is law in New Testament. Just like there is grace in New Testament and there is grace in the Old Testament, it's not two separate books. It's one whole redemptive story. So when we come to the law, it doesn't matter if I'm reading an Old Testament passage or a New Testament passage, I can use this text in one of three ways. The first use of the law, and this is one of the most important, this is going to segue into Luke's talk next. The law serves to show exactly how sinful I am, how far I am from God, how unholy I am in comparison to his holiness, and how hopeless my situation is, because if God commands me, be holy as I am holy, I'm done. I have no hope. And that's exactly what the law is there to do. It is to drive me to the knees, drive me to the foot of the cross, drive me to hopelessness and despair in myself, and to cast myself upon the mercy of my God who would send his son to die in my place. The law shows us our need for Christ. Second use of the law. This is merely the idea that law restrains evil. You may be a completely unregenerate, God-hating individual, and you can uh, be persuaded by the law, to not commit a crime. Okay? If we're back in the Old Testament era, right, the law of Moses is the law of our land, and I'm sitting there, and I might be like, you know what? I really feel like stealing my neighbor's heifer. That's a mighty fine heifer. I could use that thing. But if I steal it, I might die. Hmm. I like living. I like the heifer. I like living more. I might have no heart desiring to serve God, no heart desiring to walk after righteousness, no heart desiring to love and respect my neighbor. My heart might be so inward and wicked that I only want to serve myself, but because I want to serve myself and I don't want to die, I'm not going to steal that heifer. Because every one of the Ten Commandments carries the death penalty. In fact, every sin, every violation of God's moral law bears the death penalty. Why? Because the sin leads to death. The wages of sin is death. We see this all throughout the moral law of God. Out of pure fear, the second use of the law says the, the law can restrain the wicked hands of man even if their heart has not been changed. So first use is to drive us before Christ. We need to know the depths of our depravity. The second use, we understand that the law restrains even those who have no respect for God or for his law. And then the third use, this will tie in with Pastor Joe's talk. The third use of the law is for the believer. The heart that has been regenerated. The heart that has been filled with the Spirit of God in the vein of Ezekiel 36 when he says to us, I will put my Spirit in you. I will cause you to walk in my laws and my statutes. My law will be a delight unto you. Now very often we look at the Old Testament law and we're like, David must have been high or something. How can he say that this is a delight? How can he say he loves this? Well, when we understand that what God is speaking about in Ezekiel 36 and what David is always speaking about in the Psalms is that when the law comes before us as a guide for living, as a rule for life to seek after righteousness, I cannot go wrong in following this law. There is no death to be had for me as I walk after righteousness. Now, I am thousands of years separated from the nation of Israel. I am not bound by these laws. They are not the law of the land. The Constitution is the law of the land in America. I am not bound ceremonially to keep an obedience to these laws. My sacrifice is Christ. I am still bound by the words of Christ himself to love my God and to love my neighbor. And if you're wondering, well, how do I effectively love my God and love my neighbor? I would turn you to the law. Because again, the purpose of the law is to, to, to cause us to flee from sin and to walk in love to our neighbor. And there is a great delight in this. There's a great beauty in this aspect. Because I don't have to question, is this thing pleasing to God or not? If it's in his law, it is pleasing. I don't have to question, is this going to lead to me to have problems? Is this going to lead to death or to sin? Because it's in God's law. I can look at this as the guide 
for my life, knowing that as I walk in obedience to these things, not for salvation, but as a result of the salvation freely given to me, the Lord is well pleased. Okay, just to recap, three uses of the law. First, to show you your desperate need for Christ. Two, to restrain the wickedness of sinful men who may not have any love for God. But three, for you, believer, for you who love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind, it is the guide to show you life. Christ walked in perfect obedience to the law because we cannot. But now, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can be given that new heart that has a desire to walk in as much obedience as I am able. And therefore, we realize that we are walking pleasing to the Lord. I want to leave you with this last quote from Augustine. If you guys don't know who St. Augustine of Hippo is, he's my jam. He's a fantastic early theologian. But he has some of the best lines uh, around. But this particular line says, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in thee. This is going to segue into Luke. Unless you have been transformed by the gospel, you will never have any rest. The law will be a constant curse and burden. The, it's the guillotine waiting over your neck because we all intrinsically know we have violated God's law. But in the gospel, there is rest. But even in the gospel, we can have this understanding and this, this, this ache in our heart that I, I feel like God would have me live in a certain way to his glory. Yes, believer, because your heart is still restless, because you're trying to find your own path to obedience. Look to the law of God. Look to it as your framework and your guideline. And you will have your delight in the Lord as you rest in Christ, knowing that your obedience is not what matters. It is Christ's obedience, 110%. Yet I have the privilege to look to God's word to guide and be the lamp to my feet.